Now, aortic pressure is greater than ventricular pressure. So at this point in time, you can have your valve closed. Notice it closes at a higher pressure than it opens at. The higher aortic pressure closes the semilunar valve. Pressure continues to drop. This is where that dichotic notch occurs. It's the disturbance because of the closing of the valve. And then we're back to here. So this is going to start to decrease again as blood is moving away from the heart. Notice that our... Um, Semilunar valves are still closed. So we're back to a situation where both sets of valves are closed. It doesn't matter whether the ventricles are contracting or relaxing, the relationships of pressure are the same, allowing both valves to be closed. So we have a rapid drop in ventricular pressure. In the meantime, because our AV, our AV valves have been closed, our atrial pressure has gradually started to rise. And so as ventricular pressure drops, it drops below atrial pressure. That's what's happening right here. It drops below atrial pressure. So now our AV valves open. So we have a period of time again when the semilunar valves close before the AV valves open isovolumetric. Both sets of valves are closed. So we have another isovolumetric period. Only the, the ventricles are relaxing. So this is known as isovolumetric relaxation. ventricular volume, we had a flat line during isovolumetric contraction, the semilunar valves opened and we had ventricular ejection, we pumped blood out, not all of it, we go from about 100, and, out of 135 mils we pump about 70, so I'm almost a little, a little more than half. Then we have a flat line again because we're in isovolumetric relaxation, there's no more blood coming in and there's no blood leaving. AV valves open and we start to gain blood into the ventricle. Okay? That's cardiac cycle. Yes? So the semilunar valves are closing, so there can't be a backflow of blood. Correct. Back what closes valves. it is the backflow and it fills those semilunar cusps. They close and no more backs in. Okay. Yeah, so the pressure then has to leave. <clears throat> All right, so before we look at. Um, some questions on that. This is the website that I put up on the, um, the D2L announcement. I found it yesterday afternoon. It's interactive, so you can stop and start the changes that are occurring. So I want to go through this again with this visualization. In addition to that, you can click on tutorial and slide this down and, and look at individual components of that as it's happening, okay? So again, the website is up on D2L. So I'm gonna just let it play and then we can stop and start it. So you're seeing blood flow through the atria, into the ventricles, out the ventricles, and so on, cycling over and over. And then this bar is moving across the cardiac cycle. Going pretty fast, okay? Trying to see all those different things that we talked about at the same time. So I'm going to stop it. And well, let me move it forward here. 
Okay. So at this point in time, you'll notice here ventricular filling. Okay. Um, both the ventricles, if you look at the ECG down at the bottom, right here, we're between the T wave and the P wave. So the heart is at rest. Notice what's happening. This green line right here is aortic pressure. So aortic pressure is dropping. The blood is moving away. Um, the the, the um, atrial pressure is starting to rise slightly, as is ventricular pressure. So now I'm going to move it back to this side. And we'll get to our P wave. So there's the P wave right at the very beginning. Notice back here what valves are open and closed. So we're just finishing up ventricular filling. Both atrioventricular valves are open, and so blood is flowing from the left atrium into the left ventricle. Blood is flowing from the right atrium into the right ventricle. So that means atrial pressure is greater than ventricular pressure. Semilunar valves are closed because aortic pressure and pulmonary trunk pressure is greater than ventricular pressure. That's what's keeping them closed. Okay? It's always a pressure gradient. There's no muscles directly pulling on those leaflets. Okay? All right. Then the P wave occurs. So we have our ECG. Here's the P wave down here. And in response to that, the atria contract. So the atria are going to contract. You can see them contracting over here, squeezing a bit more blood. And now look where we are on the ECG. We're at the QRS, which is going to result in ventricular depolarization uh, contraction. And so now as we continue that ventricular contraction, which is occurring now, let's go back a little bit. So now ventricles are contracting, pressure is rising, and now the higher ventricular pressure has closed the AV valve. So we're now in isovolumetric contraction. Because the ventricles continue to contract and none of the valves are open, the pressure spikes. It rises very rapidly, and now it's just a bit greater than the um, arterial pressure and the aortic valve so we're right here where the ventricular pressure becomes greater than aortic pressure and we push open the semilunar valve. Now we're in ventricular ejection. We're pushing blood into the aorta so aortic pressure is rising but ventricular pressure is still greater, so we're continuing to push blood into that. So our semilunar valves are open, our AV valves are still closed as we continue with ventricular ejection. Notice that the ECG, we're getting close to repolarization. We get repolarization, and the ventricles start to relax. And as they relax, <coughs> semilunar valves close. The ventricles continue to relax, and we're in isovolumetric relaxation. Again, isovolumetric because no blood is going into or out of the ventricles. Pressure drops rapidly. And now, as pressure is, is still increasing in the atria, as you can see here, and pressure is dropping in the ventricles, pressure in the atria becomes greater and that pushes open the AV valve. And we're back to ventricular filling. Cardiac cycle. <coughs> so, with this diagram, the one that you have in your lecture notes similar to this one, I think it's less scary now. You yes. can interpret it. Yes. Do you understand which line is which pressure? And you recognize that blood moves 
by a pressure gradient, and that's what opens and closes the valve, is dependent on the pressure relationship. Okay? So, you will see a series, I mean, this looks complicated over here. It took me a while to get through it. But again, if you isolate it to that one event, all you have to do is read the lines. Aortic pressure is greater than atrial pressure is greater than ventricular pressure. Ventricular pressure is greater than aortic pressure is greater than atrial pressure. So you can read that from this chart. Okay? Now I want to put these terms together over here. So we can have a variety of conditions. Aortic pressure is greater than Ventricular choices you have on that worksheet, some of the choices you would see on quizzes or exams. So which of these conditions exist, and I'll leave the diagram up here so you're a little bit of a comfort zone, a little snuggy blanket to hold on to. So which of these conditions applies during ventricular ejection? Ventricular ejection is when blood is leaving the ventricles and going into the aorta or the pulmonary trunk. So for that to happen, are the AV valves open or closed during ventricular ejection? Closed. closed. For the AV valves to close, pressure is higher between the atria or on the ventricular side. Atria. So we're looking for atrial pressure being higher than ventricular pressure. Okay, so here um, I mean, the other way around. Ventricular pressure is higher than atrial pressure. Ventricular pressure is higher than atrial pressure. It should be that one. Ventricular pressure is higher than atrial pressure. Okay, I want to go through steps. So now, for blood to leave, the semilunar valves have to be open. For semilunar valves to be open, pressure is higher on the ventricular side. So we're looking for ventricular pressure to be higher than aortic pressure. Okay, so that occurs. Ventricular pressure is higher than aortic pressure. Ventricular pressure, all oh, these are the same here. No, I worry about those. Okay, so I have two events here that meet both requirements. Only one is the correct answer. One of them can never exist and be compatible with life. Okay, atrial pressure can never be greater than aortic pressure. So if you see that as an answer choice, cross it out. It will never be an answer. Okay, look at the vast difference between aortic pressure and atrial pressure. Aortic pressure varies between, you know, if it's average, uh, about 70 to 105 to 120. Atrial pressure is going to be about 3 to 5. Your aortic pressure is three to five, you're not alive. Okay? So if you see any condition where atrial is higher than aortic, that's never going to be an answer. So when ventricular pressure is greater than aortic, semilunar valves are open. When ventricular pressure is greater than atrial, AV valves are closed. Okay? Which of these conditions would exist during isovolumetric conditions? Either relaxation or contraction. It doesn't matter. So all valves have to be 
closed during isovolumetric conditions. So which of these exists when all valves are closed? So for the semilunar valves are closed. Okay, aortic is greater than ventricular. Backflow closes the semilunar valves. Ventricular is greater than atrial. That pushes the atrioventricular valves closed. Okay, so this would be isovolumetric. Doesn't matter, it's contraction or relaxation. Okay, that leaves us then with ventricular filling when the heart is at rest. So what valves are open and what valves are closed when the heart is at rest? AV valves are open because blood is flowing into the ventricles, atrium, and then through the AV valves and then into the ventricles. So atrial is greater than ventricle. That's that. Semilunar valves are closed because the ventricles are at rest. So ventricular pressure is low. So ventricular pressure has to be less than aortic. So this would represent the situation when we have ventricular fillings. Okay. Again, when I ask you these questions, all right, you will have this chart available on the exam. And maybe at the end of the exam, where the fill-ins are, you can always turn to it and look at it. Okay? So again, it seems complicated because of all the things that are going on, but when you look at the relationship, it's logical. Pressure differences are going to determine which way the blood flows and which valves are open or closed. And the last one, it still indicates the atrial is higher than aortic? Atrial, the last one, atrial is not higher than aortic. No, the last one, the one that you just referenced. Mm -hmm. So the last one, Oh, that one, yeah, that, one, that one doesn't work. Let me change that around. Thank you. So we would have to have um, aortic first. It would be this one up here. So aortic is higher than ventricular. And I want one more data. Let's redo it. I don't have a bunch of the last one. So during ventricular filling, aortic is higher than atrial. And atrial is higher than ventricular. So that would be ventricular filling. Okay, thanks for catching that. <coughs> All right, so again, that website is up on D2L as an announcement. So if you want to go back and be a little more interactive than just staring at the diagram in your lecture notes. So when you see this diagram on the exam, it will not be labeled. The lines will be there. I won't ask you to draw the diagram. I learned my lesson on asking students to draw stuff and then trying to interpret it. Mm -hmm. But I might have those questions I have over there, or I might say, identify this pressure, or what's happening, what valve is opening or closing here. Okay, so that's why it won't be labeled, because I'll ask you to label it for me. All right, so we're going to stop there with lecture. <laughs>